Dear friends, welcome to Infos. Welcome to another video from uh, oil and gas training. Uh, pump part 4 uh, positive displacement pump. Uh, video 62. Welcome to this video. In earlier three videos, we have discussed about uh, mainly on uh, centrifugal pumps. Centrifugal pump operation, performance, uh, some construction details, uh, priming and uh, various operational and uh, uh, control uh, system, uh, little bit uh, construction details as well. So, another uh, important pump in this group is coming is positive displacement pump. Uh, more applications are there in the uh, oil and gas industry. So, in this video, uh, we will discuss about uh, uh, what is the operational uh, basic uh, uh, principle of uh, positive displacement pump and uh, uh, operational differences and uh, how it is operating, what are the characteristics, advantage and disadvantage, what are the various types of uh, positive displacement pump. Welcome to this video. So, in this one already in the left side we have discussed about uh, centrifugal pump. So, in the positive displacement pump, where is two classes mainly uh, rotary and reciprocating. Uh, so, in this class, we are taking a reciprocating pump, piston, diaphragm and plunger. Uh, we will discuss rotary in later. Positive displacement pumps physically entrap a quantity of liquid at the suction of the pump and push that quantity out of the discharge of the pump. A definitive volume of liquid is delivered for each cycle of the pump operation. The positive displacement pump delivers liquid in separate volume with no delivery in between. Positive displacement pump can be grouped into three basic categories based on their design and operation. The three groups are reciprocating pump, rotary pump and diaphragm pump. Principle of operation will continue. So, check walls are there here. See, here one check wall, here one check walls in the suction side and the discharge side. Check walls in the suction and discharge port allow flow only in one direction. How it is showing here, see, only one check valve is open here, the other one is closed here. During discharge stroke, the piston moves to the right, seating the check valve in the suction line and open in the check valve the discharge end. that means only in the discharge stroke only discharge check valve will open and the liquid will go to discharge side and the suction discharge uh, check valve is in closed position in other way in the suction stroke see in the suction check valve is open position and discharge check valve is closed position during the suction stroke the piston moves to the left causing to the check valve in the suction line between the reservoir and the pump cylinder to open and admit liquid from the reservoir. So, this way the piston and cylinder reciprocating pump first uh, pump is working in this way. <coughs> Principle of operation will continue. This is the uh, driving mechanism and this is the pump area. The volume of liquid moved by the pump in one cycle that is one suction stroke and one discharge stroke is equal to the change in the liquid volume of the cylinder as the piston moves from its farthest left position to farthest right position. So, from here to up to here it is moving by the help of a driving mechanism. So, liquid is entering and leaving using the uh, suction stroke. So, it will show one more time I can show you. Yeah, see now look at here, look at here, it is moving, moving, moving. So, to and fro, piston and cylinder is moving. Uh, sorry, piston is moving inside the cylinder. So, in the reciprocating pump category, we will go for uh, reciprocating pump. Reciprocating positive displacement pumps are generally categorized in four ways direct acting or indirect acting simplex or duplex, single acting or double acting. So, <coughs> and power pumps. 
power pumps are not uh, commonly using so other uh, three we will discuss so direct acting and indirect acting indirect acting pumps pumps have a plunger on the liquid a liquid end and that is directly driven by the pump rod also the piston rod extension thereof here it is like that one directly moving and carries the piston the power uh, end but in the double uh, indirect acting pump uh, pumps are driven by means of a beam see here is a beam and other small pump power uh, 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 facilities here beam or linkage connected to and actuated by a power piston rod of a separate reciprocating engine see this way it is pump is here and this are the uh, another power piston rod is the, uh, separately connected simplex and duplex pump in simplex pump sometimes referred as, uh, referred to as a single pump is a pump having uh, single liquid that is in the uh, pump in the cylinder duplex pump is the equivalent of two simplex group pump placed side by side on the same foundation the driving of the pistons of a duplex pump is arranged in a such a manner one piston on its and up stroke and the other piston on the down stroke see here one piston here one piston <coughs> and vice versa this arrangement doubles the capacity of duplex pump compared to a simplex pump of a comparable design so one driving mechanism is driving uh, giving uh, providing power to the two pump so that way duplex pump is working <clears throat> single acting and uh, double acting pump a single acting pump is one that take a suction filling the pump cylinder on a stroke in only one direction called suction stroke then forces the liquid out of the cylinder on the retained stroke called discharge stroke so single acting pump is uh, uh, suction and discharge only one valves so taking one suction and one discharge in double acting pump is uh, both stroke uh, two suctions uh, normally in the cylinder two suction and two discharge uh, like uh, uh, one suction stroke uh, one discharge and the suction will take and vice versa we will see how it is a double acting pump is one that as it fill one end of the liquid cylinder is discharging liquid from the other end of the cylinder on the return stroke end of the cylinder just emptied is filled and just filled is emptied see a single acting pump one possible arrangement for a single acting and a double acting pump here these two are double acting pump see here uh, four valves are there two suction valves here opposite opposite here this is suction valve uh, sorry uh, uh, this is one suction valve both suction valve here both the discharge valve here so one one suction always open and one discharge open during the stroke the other stroke other discharge and suction is open but in uh, single acting pump only one suction and one discharge is there so this is the difference between single acting so with the power source more own suction stroke and discharge stroke both case liquid is discharging power pumps power pumps convert rotary motion to low speed reciprocating motion by reduction gearing a crankshaft connecting rod and a cross head plunger or pistons are driven by cross head drives rod and piston construction similar to duplex and double acting steam pump is used by the liquid end for low pressure higher capacity unit the higher pressure units are normally single acting plungers and usually employ three triplex plungers three or more plungers substantially reduce flow pulsation relative to, to relative to simplex and even duplex pump power pumps typically have high efficiency and are capable of developing very high pressure they can be driven by either electric motor or turbine they are relatively expensive pumps 
can rarely be justified on the basis of efficiency over centrifugal pump. However, they are frequently justified over steam reciprocating pump where continuous duty service is needed due to the high steam requirement of direct acting pump. Power pump in general, the effective flow rate of reciprocating pumps decreases as the viscosity of the fluid being pumped increases because the speed of the pump must be reduced. In contrast to centrifugal pump, the differential pressure generated by reciprocating pump is independent of uh, fluid density. It is dependent entirely on the amount of force exerted on the piston. So we finish a piston and a plunger pump. We will, uh, sorry, not, uh, not finish. We will go for that one. What is a piston and a plunger pump? Here, look at the picture here. It's a small animation video here. How this is a driving mechanism, connecting rod, cross head, piston. And this, is, this area is cylinder and suction valve and discharge valve. Symbol crankshaft is also there. So this is a simple mechanism of a piston or plunger pump is working. <coughs> a tight fitting piston in a closed cylinder or a loose fitting plunger acting on a displacer are familiar versions of common reciprocating pump. Piston plunger pump have the following characteristics. Capable of almost any pressure and of large flow capacity. Piston plunger pump have following characteristics. NPSH requirements for these pumps are more complex than for rotary and kinetic pump due to the pulsed nature of the suction. So pulsed nature means only uh, discharge stroke uh, liquid is releasing, suction stroke no liquid is uh, releasing. That is a pulsation. To avoid that one normally, they prefer a double acting pump. An expensive, uh, expensive in large sizes, easily controlled by the stroke adjustment or variable speed. We can adjust the stroke according to that, the increasing and decreasing the stroke. <coughs> Advantage include the following, the ability to develop, uh, develop high pressure in a single stage, high reliability, pressure can be controlled without affecting the flow rate, high efficiency on these pumps. So reliability and efficiency. Disadvantage, the necessity of slow speed operation, high operating and maintenance cost, typically heavy and bulky. So let us see diaphragm pump. Diaphragm pump. Let us see the diaphragm pump. This is the diaphragm pump. A flexible diaphragm with suction and a discharge valve is there. When the piston and plunger is moving, the diaphragm will open, liquid getting inside and when it is pressing, liquid will go outside. So this is the uh, diaphragm area. So flexible diaphragm. Very much suitable for corrosive liquid, viscous liquid and some uh, like acid uh, pumping and other thing, corrosive liquid, very much uh, suitable. Fluid is transferred by the pressure of a diaphragm that flexes to form a cavity that is filled by liquid. A diaphragm pump has the following characteristics. Transfers virtually any liquid. Design can handle high temperature. Is in infinitely adjustable in capacity and discharge pressure by regulating the movement of the diaphragm. Can be flexed by either an air supply or reciprocating plunger. So turbocharger air also we can use as a driver here. Uh, air facility also yeah, using that one instead of the plunger. Is used for pumping chemicals, glue, ink, solvent, fat, grease and dirty water. So these are the a special type application of a diaphragm type reciprocating pump <clears throat> is limited to low low a low flow and a head application due to the design of the flexible diaphragm thanks for watching this video definitely we will check with any other module is pending in the pump principle principle pump videos pump operation and training
uh, then uh, otherwise we will start a new module uh, for uh, uh, in this series thanks for watching this video have a good day